Hey everybody, how you doing? So, we're gonna be doing some ground explosion without uh, fire and smoke. We're just gonna do the tie flow stuff. Um, it's, as you can see, pretty simple setup here. Uh, can scrub, and we get that. You know, it's something. You can definitely go further with this. Um, I'm not going to bother doing the displacement on the inside faces and whatnot. Basically, what you would do is just do just cache it, do a tie uh, tie cache, tie flow cache, bring it into a new event, and do the subdividing and displacement, but. That might be for another tutorial. I'm going to try to keep this uh, somewhat short. So let's go over first before, before we rebuild this. So we have our road. Bring it in. I'm just picking the material. Not part of the tutorial or anything. But then we are fracturing it with Voronoi. And here I'm doing some... I guess optimization a little bit so instead of doing uh, the the edge fracture <coughs> on the first event I'm just using the bombs that we have here uh, and using, using them uh, with a distance and if it's within the distance then we can do uh, edge fracturing and then I bring those edges into here and do a little bit of extra fracturing on those and then we're sending it to this event right here uh, where we add the fisk shape uh, and also again we are using object test using the bombs and uh, sending them into the last event to do the binding and we have the force and whatnot this is also so we don't we don't have to bind everything all of these pieces so the white stuff that you see here it's it is it, it do has you know it's a kinematic um so they they just stand still but they're still part of the you know collision they they just not gonna move. Uh, yeah, so let's um, rebuild this. By the way, the bombs. I'm not gonna rebuild everything. The the bombs and the timing that I have here. It's just strength. You know when they are gonna go off. Start time. Just kind of changing that up. You find those in here, the forces. So what nice, what's nice about those is uh, we have the range and start time when they are going to go off. So it's just convenient. So let's let's remove this. So, yep, let's go, let's go. So let's start with a birth object, important. Picking our little road here. And uh, just to kind of mimic what I did before, just an instance material. I'm just gonna pick my material. Doesn't matter, we're not gonna render anyway, but now we have to fracture this. We're going to use the Voronoi. Now, there's, of course, like you can, the fracture part, doing this by hand would, of course, be the absolute best way. And there's clustering and whatnot as well in, in here, in the tie flow, but we're not going to touch the clustering for this one. But, I might go over that on another video, but for now, we're going to keep it simple. Not that clustering is uh, hard, but uh, 
let's give it another color <sighs> gray that's good I don't think we need to do anything other than uh, setting the points how many um, pieces we want and uh, I'm just gonna bring this up on my other screen just so this doesn't take way too long uh, let's start off with the object test so I have two object tests uh, because I want the smaller ones to be on a separate one so I can actually do this like that and then I take the small ones like so add those in here uh, changing the distance now I don't know the distance but let's do something like that maybe let's copy this whole event can remove the birth object we don't need that we don't need this we don't need this I didn't have to copy it. Uh, let's do the edge fracture. And let's bring in the, now we're taking those into here. We don't want to use the edge corner. That's what we want to use. Looking okay. So far. And there's, I don't know, you can play around with the settings. Let's pick something. Now we want to take those fractures into this new event and just do a little bit more more annoy on those. This is only going to fracture the, the corners like we had here. Uh, bu -bu 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 what do we want more let's send all of these guys to another event just send out this is going to send everything i don't think that needs maybe yeah whatever so now we have that now let's add a physics shape so we get some physics in the house. Um, let's see. Convex hole, fine. Mm, by the way, I also disabled the the default gravity because the active stuff kind of started f sinking so I did we're gonna create our own have our own gravity based on uh, velocity we'll see that soon we need another object we can just copy these shift drag like so we have those I believe I had these a little bit bigger. This is the this is for what is uh, active when it comes to the physics, and so we have active and we have uh, whatever it's called kinetic, kinematic. Uh, let's see. So after this, we want to do the switch. I want to have it right here. It's it, if we had this over here, and then send over out these to the next event where we create our bindings, it's not going to bind. So therefore, we're doing it this way. We can add a mesh if you want to render as well. We don't need it on these. As you can see, I, I, there's no particles in here. You can activate this by right clicking and just display particle count. You can see we have all our 12,000 particles here. 
let's see. Drag this out. I'm gonna give this another color. And then we are sending these guys over here. Hmm, yeah. It's okay. What else do we need? Now we need a physic uh, bind. And for physic bind, obviously, you need to have a physic shape. Uh, and I believe I tried both of these. The joint was kind of nice. Gives this um, more sticky feel to it. Uh, now I don't know what settings I had. You're just going to have to play around with this. And I'm going to disable for now. So we don't have to wait. Mm. 3000 maybe. Like so. Uh, now we want to have the force for the bombs. And then another force for the gravity. Start off with the bombs. Let's just pick these babies. Add selected. And we don't really have to do anything more than that for the bombs. Because we have kind of the settings in here. And then we have the gravity, minus one, that's the default, uh, based depending on the scale and whatnot, you can, if you want to have something that, you know, feel that it has more weight to it, you can have less gravity, but depends on strength of the bombs and whatnot, you just play around with it. But we don't want this to be active all the time because that's what it is right now. So we're going to enable filter and say if velocity magnitude is greater than, say, 0.1, then have velocity. Uh, there was no, this is going to go, say, timing continuously. So, in this case, I didn't have a problem where the pieces kind of started floating again when they were slow enough for it. But otherwise, you would just send shit off to a new event where they always have gravity. But it wasn't a problem in this case. So let's just keep it the way it is. Let's add another mesh. I'm not going to render, but render instance. But yeah, let's turn this on. And let's see. Oops, I missed. Happens to the best of us. Okay, so let's... Uh, let's update this. I have CUDA on. Mm, you can download that on Typeflow's website. It's sometimes faster, sometimes not. In this case, it was faster. Uh, but it depends on what it is you're going to do. Uh, yes, we don't have break, uh, breaking uh, bindings, as you can see. That's a good thing to have. So let's go to the bind. And we turn on break. Well, it is breakable, but let's add these guys. And I have no idea what settings I had. Mm. Come on. God damn it. But yeah, this is not the important part. You can play around with that. It's going to vary anyways so yeah but it's breaking at least it's kind of cool should use like phoenix fd and have some fire and smoke some proper explosions could be a longer tutorial 
where we do something more. Uh, but yeah, that's that. <clears throat> I don't think uh, there's uh, that much more to say about it. Yeah, maybe it could be optimized even more, but at least it's you know a little bit optimized instead of just fracturing and doing these uh, corner fractures everywhere and also binding everything, which would be unnecessary. Oh, I actually see it's not, let's see, did I, oh, yeah, turn on kinematic on the physics switch, obviously. Now, let's see, they should collide now at least, yeah. Yeah. And you, you know, play around with the bindings. Uh, you know, you you do see a lot of videos on YouTube, uh, people teaching and uh, or just making a video like and then destroying something, and they just add Voronoi and kind of call it a day. Uh, looks kind of looks boring not realistic i'm not saying this looks realistic but at least it's some extra details and of course creating the bindings make it kind of gives us clustering ish you know uh, then you could i mean you could uh, fracture bigger pieces based on a velocity if you want to fracture it even more so a lot of things you can do but of course you know adding displacement mm, then you would just I'm not gonna do it but when you fracture we have in our fracture we can set an override cap material ID set this to one and then you would use that to displace that ID now it, it's a bit finicky uh, and let's see I'm just going to bring it in this place you would of course also need to subdivide there's a subdivide in here as well but noise I didn't find that working well so use a text map and just bring in a noise if you want to do that uh, yeah, or you can do you just do it on render time. Just, you don't have to like you can fake it with bump or a displacement texture maybe. But yeah, so I don't know how long I've been talking, but okay, under twenty minutes. Hope that was okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. See you in the next video. Bye bye.